Okay. <clears throat> Let us come to an SRT. Imagine a situation where uh, you have to help two people cross a river. One person is a lady who is around 60 to 65 years old and the other one is a 40, 45 year old man but he is not having one leg. You can help any one of them crossing the river and you never know whether you will be able to come back and help the other one. Whom you will help first and why? Sir, I think I will help the uh, the man with a single leg uh, because I think that uh, I will, he's not having a leg so it will be difficult for him. I'll help him cross the entire uh, thing and I will ask the lady to observe me as I do. Now, I will, since she's observing me, the the way I take him and the way I manage to cross it. I believe that since she's all uh, well, she'll be able to imitate my actions and uh, do my strategy and then she'll be able to do it herself. Okay. And in the meantime, if you get a chance to come back and help the lady, so you can always do that, right? Yes, sir, definitely. No doubts. Okay, fine. Suppose you have a um, defense examination tomorrow and you have an SSB tomorrow, right? Like you need to either go for the examination or you need to take the SSB. Which one you will go for and why? You can choose only one at this point of time. Um, um, sir, I think I will go for the SSB. Uh, because I believe that the defense exam I may appear like next time. And uh, I, I think that I will choose the SSB, sir. Why? Um, sir, because uh, from what I know, I think I'm pretty confident about SSB. I would not say that I'm 100% sure that I would uh, get through. But I think that uh, since I've observed last time that we it actually does not require preparation. It's more like the thing you already have. So mm -hmm. I believe that I would go for SSB. Okay. Uh, tell me what you know about Indo-Sino relationships uh, at this point of the time. Um, sir, currently, the not only the Indo-Sino relationships, but the Sino relationship with majority of the countries is very strained. Mm -hmm. uh, because particularly of the COVID era, and it has been observed that um, allegedly China has uh, the, the virus uh, obviously surfaced in Wuhan and there it has been alleged that China is uh, it is it, it, it was created by the Chinese government although it is not proven yet but there's a sense of hostility amongst all the countries towards China and other than that India has uh, so since after Chinese independence in 1949 there has been very good relations till 1962 but mm -hmm. since then the relations have predominantly been dominated by uh, the standoffs skirmishes and all those all the sort of things so therefore I believe that uh, right now the relations are strained and uh, I do believe that uh, it is the global pressure that China is currently under that has led to the present disengagement and uh, reassertion of India's hegemony in the region and what do you know about the India-Sri Lanka relationships? Yeah, India-Sri Lanka relationships have been very amicable. Uh, also, like recently, not recently, but a few days, a few years back, uh, PM was awarded with their highest uh, highest civilian award. And also the Project Maitri, sir. India has been uh, during the present times, COVID times, India has been contributing, uh, distributing uh, vaccines to the neighboring countries. And Sri Lanka is one of the countries to st uh, India started with mm -hmm. uh, and also Indian um, Indian Air Force, Indian Tri Services are recently participating in the 70th uh, Republic Day of uh, Sri Lanka. So mm -hmm. I think that the relations are very amicable, very friendly and India she sees a good friend in Sri Lanka. Okay. And what do you know about the India-Nepal relationships with reference to especially the, uh, uh, the border dispute? Uh, sir, uh, India-Nepal relationships have been very amicable and uh, Nepal is like a younger brother considering the open border scenario and uh, uh, everything. So the relations have been smooth but however recently because of uh, improper demarcation between the borders between both the countries because of open borders I would say, uh, there has been a problem that there is a misunderstanding or rather a disagreement 
between both the countries on where the border line is this has led to a slight uh, i should say slight hostility between both the countries but i think it has it is a part of uh, the overall relations is a part of being the of the journey and i do believe that uh, soon both the countries will sort this out and uh, it will be amicable as always okay but do you know that and i do believe sir Mm-hmm. Sorry, I do believe that, sir, that uh, the uh, map issue, they when Nepal issued a new map and the border dispute is uh, more of a, has been uh, it has a international uh, link to it, as in this mm-hmm. backed by other countries. That's just a private, uh, I should say, opinion, just an opinion. Mm-hmm. And do you know that uh, the Supreme Court of uh, Nepal has reinstated Oli as in the helm or in the helm of affairs? So, will it affect the relationship of India and Nepal again, sir? It can, it may affect, and it has affected. Uh, but I don't think that this will lead to a proper, a full-fledged war or a full-fledged, uh, you know, enmity between both the countries. The relations have been strained. There is no doubt about it. But I believe that it, this is something that can be sorted. It is not a major uh, standoff issue. That's my mm-hmm. my opinion. and how is india's relation changing with pakistan say in last couple of years also mm, so in last couple of years i believe that we always have known that uh, there have been disputes between both the countries although they originate from the same uh, subcontinent um uh, and uh, i believe that uh, the relations have been straining and uh, india has had a better approach towards uh, pakistan by not uh, by simply ignoring pakistan's uh, you know issues and uh, considering the end of terrorism considering the article 370 issue and considering that pakistan is still trying to back the farmo protests and the other uh, issues going on this Mm-hmm. the protest so i believe that uh, uh, it is more like the relations have sort of ended like we do not engage in their stuff and uh, they obviously do but it's just like that there's no no relations at all we are just cut off okay and uh, what do you know about the rafal deal uh, <clears throat> sir uh, the rafal deal originates back to 2011 actually It was in 2011 that uh, Indian Air Force uh, had to select an aircraft for induction, and it was uh, Rafal was selected amongst six aircrafts across the country, all the six uh, across the world. All the six aircrafts there were various aircrafts, and two were narrowed down. One of them were, was Rafal. and in 2016 and the deal was made for 36 rafales and uh, now presently india is having 11 of them and it is expected that soon the rest will come and uh, it is expected that rafal will uh, increase india's uh, will you know reassert india's uh, sovereignty and uh, strengthen the region okay and what is the range of rafal so it is 3700 kilometers Tell me what place you can target with Rafal. From um, here, so we can definitely reach Pakistan. We can reach uh, Tibet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah. Fine. Ira, uh, let us come to the other part of your life. That is that you have been a sporty person, right? Tell me about your sports career, from where you started till which rank and range you have uh, say played. and what was your favorite match and why okay. uh sir so i have been a sports person and i have uh, i my sports actually started with the uh, with simple athletic simple racing and all in school it was that time i realized that i'm good at this and uh, i uh, we had school we had the martial arts classes in schools then that time i realized that i really want to pursue this forward mm-hmm. and uh, that is why i took up i joined the ma stadium i took up the vishal academy i took uh, i took proper training and i became a professional player um i was uh, it was long back i was on the peak of my i should say uh, <laughs> physical fitness and affinity and all and i did manage to play uh, nationals and i scored the silver medal and all uh, but however i should say that uh, after that i had my 10th standard and i uh, my parents were not very uh, they like that you should study right now <laughs> so i had to <laughs> sort of uh, give it up and so was the case during 11th and 12th standard that you know this is the time you need to really study and give study, up all the other things yeah. yeah so it was mainly the parental pressure that time that led me 
uh, gave up uh, taekwondo mm-hmm. other than that i played many uh, sports oh, throughout school i played kho kho i played kho kho into school i played hockey although i don't like this sport very much but i played hockey <laughs> and uh, <laughs> kabaddi and all and uh, now sir uh, during college times i've been busy uh, although i did not participate uh, in the like big uh, tournaments or something but i have been engaged and i've started started building up those things and i do hope that uh, if i get uh, the opportunity to join the iaf i sort of continue that thing and uh, sir uh, regarding the favorite match sir uh, i uh, i would say that there have been a lot of favorite matches but the match i recall right now is the one where i uh, managed to win at the last moment like okay. it it was uh, very much certain that i may have i could have lost the match and when i won i was surprised myself i was looking around because uh, the player in front of me she was uh, she was a senior and she was slightly higher weight uh, like mm-hmm. larger weight and more than me but in the range and uh, she was a very experienced player and uh, i had uh, i was uh, when i was uh, called for the match and i saw the opponent i was like this is going to be tough <laughs> because <laughs> okay <laughs> so she was very high weight so i anyhow we managed and uh, i was not losing i was not winning in the starting i mm. i fell down i managed to hurt myself many a times and uh, i don't know eventually how i okay. managed to <laughs> I just did it, and uh, that moment when I won, it was more than winning the national championship. Even <laughs> it was a regular match; it was not a tournament. Okay, okay. Uh, I know. Tell me something. Uh, if you have to take three things from sports, what are those three things which you have learned in your life from sports? Uh, so definitely discipline. I mean, I, I. really i i i get a little irritated if i if everything doesn't go by the exact order so secondly i would say uh, sir i love uh, working hard i love sweating I, i don't know what is it about if i'm sitting and doing nothing i don't i in say air conditioner and not not sweating i don't feel like i've done anything the entire day so i would say that uh, persistence that uh, hard work is something i take up and final thing would be sir uh, Uh, the way so the a sense of integrity as in uh, so in our sport in taekwondo it is more like you the points are as per the wish of the judges there's no there's no ga- goal system that you know it is obvious that you're getting a point for it mm-hmm. it is more like there are four jury members they are sitting around nowadays it has started with the pressure points there are uh, you know the kick is mm-hmm. blow is felt there and then it is counted but mm-hmm. more during our times it was that it was just the jury that would decide they would rate the point that this person deserves a point here and if they all of them rated then you're given a point more than 3 they rated there are four mm-hmm. judges so rather than seeing the uh, uh, i would say the skill obviously they see the skill but it was more like how it was also the integrity of the person uh, mm. that was seen by the jury and on that basis the marks were given so i believe that's also something i learned that okay so you were very happy that you pursued sports in your life Yes, uh, sir. Extremely happy. I'm, in fact, I'm uh, not happy that I couldn't continue. 